Good afternoon, and welcome to our first chapter program of the year. Due to the ongoing health issues, we have decided to present this program virtually. As always, the health and safety of our membership is foremost in our minds. I wish to acknowledge James Leahy, our media provider, without whose generous help and his extraordinary patience, this program would not be possible. This format is new territory for all of us, but I am sure you will find it inspiring and an encouragement to continue your studies in Ichabon. If you have any questions during this program, please text those questions to 707-293-0614. There will be time after uh, Tan's demonstration for programs, uh, for questions. Now, I would like to introduce today's special guest. Our first guest is Ms. Hiroko Inu, wife of the Vice Council General, but don't, I'm sorry, yeah. Deputy Council General, I'm sorry, Mrs. Inu, of Japan and our honorary president of our chapter. Mrs. Ilu, would you like to say some words to us? Thank you, Ron-san. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to join you for today's Ikebana in the Virtual Age program. Thank you, Mr. Ron Brown, Ikebana International San Francisco Bay Area Chapter President, and all of the members for holding this event and inviting me here today. Even though we are physically distant, I am glad that today we have a chance to meet virtually in appreciation of flowers, Ikebana, and each other. I think that we are truly fortunate to be living in an age where we have access to technology that can help keep us connected. I am glad that all of the Ikebana international members and viewers can continue to share and build friendship through flowers. I look forward to seeing today's lovely arrangements and thank you for brightening our day. I hope that everyone continues to stay safe and healthy. And I look forward to when we can see each other in person again. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ibu. I would now like to introduce Council Hiroki Nomura, who is the Council for Cultural Affairs here in San Francisco, and he is our chapter advisor. Mr. Nomura, would you be kind enough to say a few words? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very glad to join you today. Thanks to President Ron Brown, as always, and all the members of Ikebana International for making this event possible. I've been missing you, missing all of you since I met you in person, which was more than six months ago. It's unbelievable. But the power of Ikebana brings us together and connects everyone once again in this difficult time. And also, I'd, I'd like to thank those of you who took part in our Ikebana virtual event, which was held last month. It was a great success thanks to everyone involved. Today, I, would, I look forward to seeing the wonderful presentation and learning more about the Ikebana. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Mr. Nomura. And now I would like to introduce Mitsuko Maruyama, who is the chair of the day. Mitsuko. Thank you, Ron. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our virtual Ikebana program. Before I introduce today's uh, demonstrator, I would like you to enjoy the Ikebana arrangement presented by five schools. Uh, before their presentation, I would like to remind you again that there will be a Q&A time at the end of the demonstration. Please text your questions at 707-293-0614. This number will be shown on the bottom of your screen. So each presenter will introduce 
his or her arrangement. So Irene. Hi, my name is Irene Jenkins and I belong to the Aratami School of Ikebana and my sensei is Sumi Metz. When I began creating my arrangement, I was calling it my shelter in place. And everything was green and came from my yard. I, I think green is a very calming color. And I'm using Ming Fern, Japanese Laurel, and Xandu Philodendron. Then our son was evacuated to our house from the Santa Cruz Mountains fires with his children, his dog, and two chinchillas. And the chinchillas needed a branch to choose a chew on. So I sacrificed one of my collection. And here it is now with all its chew marks. I think it makes it even nicer. <clears throat> At this point, I felt there needed to be a light in the future. And so I added the Gerbera for the promise coming on. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sandra Hatcher, and I would like to apologize for the technical difficulties we had. Perhaps I spent more time on my arrangement when I should have been paying my internet bill. But um, I'm Sandra Hatcher. I study Ikenobo. I'm very proud to study with Mieko Takeda. And um, today I arranged a style that is unique to Ikenobo. It's a Rika style. And there are two types. There is a classical arrangement and a contemporary Rika. And this is a contemporary Rika called Rika Shimbutai. And my arrangement And main material is um, ambush grass and cosmos. And then supporting branches, I've added driftwood from Stinson Beach, Burnett. Uh, I wanted to have a feeling of, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Mitsuko Maruyama of Ohara School. I've been studying under Mrs. Suyo Fujimoto for over 40 years, and I really enjoyed it every moment of it. Today's arrangement is Heika, just slanting style using Yamagobo, the pokui, and Oriental lily, and Japanese miscanthus, Suzuki in Yabane or Takanoha form. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ron Brown. I'm the Sogetsu School, and I've been studying Sogetsu almost 40 years. My current teacher is Kiko Shibata. My arrangement is in a self made container. I made this container quite a few years ago. This is a dried giant bird of paradise leaf. I, one of my favorite flowers sunflowers, magnolia branches, and that's about it. Um, so I hope you enjoy my arrangement. Good afternoon. My name is Susan Okada, and I've been studying the Wapu style of Ikebana with my teacher, uh, Mrs. Sega Hoirup, for the past oh, almost 25 years. Today, I'd like to share with you an arrangement that is for the summer. I have a miscansis that blooms in the summer and I've added as my main stem and the supporting stems are with Italian ramness. I've uh, used yellow gladiolus for my floral focus and added a lavender um, pneumonium for accents. And because this is a summer arrangement, my pin frog is set to the back and one side of the sui bang or flat base so that you're able to view the water surface. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Before I introduce the today's demonstrator, I would like to remind again, there is a Q&A time 
and after the demonstration. So please text your questions at 707-293-0614. Now I will be reading a brief Ikebana biography of today's demonstrator, Han Nguyen. Han Nguyen was born in Vietnam to the family of an artist. She was introduced to Ikebana at an early age, but only began her formal training when she moved to the United States. To this day, she has been studying Wahoo's Ikebana for more than 30 years. Currently, she holds Gakkan degree. In adding the Ikebana background, in 2014, she took incentive course of a prestigious mummy flower design school in Tokyo. The school is well known for Hanakubari, the freedom to design without the kenza. Can served as president of Ikebana International from 2012 to 2014 and 2016 and 2018. She is currently president of Ikebana Teachers Federation and first vice president of the Wafu Ikebana Society of California. She taught the City College of San Francisco, Fremont Union School, and Palo Alto Union School District. Currently, she is holding a classes on Zoom. Tan has been displayed in many exhibitions, demonstration programs, flower shows, and museums. She exhibits annually at Bouquet to Art at the Ang Museum. She also exhibits internationally in Paris, Vietnam, Japan, and various cities in the US. She recently moved to Vineyard Property in California Central Coast and keeping her busy gardening, teaching Ikebana, caring for 97-year-old mother, making masks, and cooking. We're so proud to introduce Ms. Tan Nguyen. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today. And first, I would like to thank you, everyone out there, to join this program. We live in unprecedented time. So for this program to come, to be able to offer to everyone, uh, we try to use materials as much as possible from our property. And I have to buy some flowers from the market. But the point here is to show that we use, we manage what we can from our land. So today I am gonna to present to you Wafu Ikebana, um, different style of Wafu Ikebana. But first of all, I would like to present to you a basic Wafu Ikebana arrangement. And the following arrangements will be more like a freestyle. So I am using this basket here. And it is a, a black basket. My daughter gave it to me. And for this basket, I'm gonna use my main material here is penisatum. Penisatum is a grass. And grass, using grass material with the bamboo, bamboo is also grass material, is a very appropriate for the summer. So, Try to make it a little bit. There's a rock here. Let's see. Okay, so penicillin is my main material here. It's the longest one. Normally, we do this program if we would be meeting in person at the Hall of Flowers in San Francisco, we will be, the, the demonstration will last maybe about an hour plus and minus. 
but we decided because we are using this virtual program here, digital program. So we decided we're gonna shorten it a little bit to half. Instead of an hour, we're gonna do half an hour. I think we think that is more appropriate and more tolerable for you ladies and gentlemen out there. So because of that, I'm gonna really pushing for time right now, trying to accomplish as much as I can. Okay, probably. Green first, please. Green first, green, green first. And it said, um, is the main material. The next one is petersporum. And petersporum form the mass at the bottom. I'm arranging from the back. So that it's easier for you to see. In normal class, we would require maybe about sometime more than an hour to make an arrangement. So today, because of this, we're gonna make it really short. So I will do as best as I can. Cutting flowers, my flower material in the water. And many of you out there, you are Ikebana practitioner. So you're not very foreign with this practice at all. Because cutting flowers in the water, preventing all these little bubbles from sticking on the stem. And because of that, it gives the flowers a much easier way to absorb the water and for that, because of that, the flowers will live a lot longer. So I have, I'm gonna use five chrysanthemum and this is Cremone chrysanthemum. And to try to use number, not to use number four, four flowers because four in Chinese or in Japanese is not a good, it's not a, it's, how do you say it in, uh, in Chinese for? Stay. Stay. And it's not a very lucky word. So we try to avoid that. And the other thing is because Ikebana is an asymmetrical art. For using four, it's easy to make it symmetrical. But five or three, the art number, Odd numbers kind of give you a sense of asymmetrical or it's easy to do, to do it. It doesn't mean that you don't never use four or six, you do. But when you do that, you still have to maintain the idea of using being able to present your arrangement in an asymmetrical way. So this is my, let me grass, grass. So instead of using a basket, just as a straight, straightforward, I'm tilting a little bit of that and I kind of give it a little bit of a, a, a movement, a, some interest. And that is the basic Wafu Moribana using basket and basket material and basket container. So I'm moving to the next arrangement. And I'm moving from a traditional arrangement style to a more modern style. Wafu main model is to use the container you like, the material you like, and to the place of display that you like. So in a, in a way, it is very free. It's very free. So uh, as long as you understand the basic of the waffle style, and then this asymmetry, the in and out, the motion, the depth, then you would be able to kind of de design it in a freestyle, still maintaining the principle of your design. 
I'm using this um, this container. It is done by a potter in the Bay Area. His name is Bruno. And my little uh, white thing here that you can see is just a piece of um, wrapping paper, white wrapping paper. My material here is an elephant ear. Okay. Um, I cut the elephant ears from my friend garden when I went up to San, San Jose on Tuesday to get material. So, well, I thank you, Kathy, for providing her beautiful material from her garden. Baby breath kind of intermingle with the paper here. And I'm covering the paper with the baby breath to create a little bit more, more playful look. Ikebana doesn't have to be serious all the time. It could be energetic. It could be poetic. It could be a little bit playful. It could be for children, for adults, for different occasions. And baby breath kind of giving a little bit of a new texture to enhance the paper. And the paper is kind of wrapping around it with some the baby breath coming out of it. Okay, so now I'm gonna have a punctuation point. And my punctuation point is the bird of paradise. And if you see this, there's only one flower, but it has a vibrant color. And you can, you know, in Ikebana, you can call this a one point arrangement. One point arrangement is that one beautiful, huge flower to create that punctuation point. And let's see if it's, that's good enough. Okay, let's see here. I moved to this area about six months ago, and it is a very quiet farming community, mostly a winery and vineyard, and quiet, lots of uh, lands, lots of beautiful horizon, and it is being fondly called the land of wine and cowboy. So the little birds kind of picking out from the seas of okay, so that's my second one. It's modern, more modern style, using a piece of paper. And then my third one is a little bit bigger. So I would need to go. So when you have a strong line like this, you really don't want to take away the power of the strong line. So any flower you add to it, it's gonna be, you have to think about it. Do you want to really add to it or do you want that is enough? And that's the problem that I have this morning. I want to have flowers, I want to have colors, but at the same time, you just can't do it, overdo it. As we say in Ikebana, Ikebana is an art of deduction not an art of addition as with Western design. So keeping that in mind, then deduction to the point that that's it. You don't want to have anything more to it. And I think that I'm gonna keep it just like this, very subdued tones, using fresh material, philodendron, some succulent, sedum, and this is a piece of a dry succulent that I cut it from the city college when I was teaching there. And then I asked a little bit more movement with the kiwi. And you can show the front now. That's good. All right, so um, 
we are still pushing in time. So my next arrangement, as I mentioned earlier, pretty much the, the structure is, done, is pretty much done this morning. I got up this morning, cut the fresh um, grapes and put it together. And then um, my, one of my friends here, he's here to help me run. He went to the flower market to get some high, high heliconia for me. And the heavy heliconia, this hanging heliconia is so fragile that it is, I have to give it some surgery this morning to hold it together. So this grape is cut out this, this morning. And you know, the grapes, they don't really last long. The grape will last long, but the leaves are just not, not very good. I'm trimming off much more, most of the leaves here. And let's see. So I think that this one, Bird Paradise, will be just complementing this. And you know, if you have an orchard, a vineyard, you know that you have a lot of birds. I mine, they don't eat my grapes, but they just make nest in, in the, the vineyard. So thinking about that, I said, well, you know, the, not only the Bird of Paradise kind of complementing the beauty of all this green and the grape, but also saying the story that birds really love vineyard and they live, they make nests in there. And also on the, the other side that you will see here is the grapevine, a very old grapevine. The base I use here is from Thomas Arakawa. I was, he has he done a lot of these mistakes, <coughs> but that's a lot smaller than this. And one day I said, well, Thomas, can you make something that really big for me? And he came out with this and I got two of them and I just love them. Always think about the depth. So when you look at the front, You took look at the front. It's leaning out to you, kissing you, and then it goes to the back. So that's why you create the depth. Always have depth because it's, it, Kibana is a three-dimensional art. It's a sculpture art. So sculpture art, you design in space. Make sure that you have three dimensions. The 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 bird of paradise really bring out the colors <coughs> of the grapes. And I love this uh, heliconia because it's really give the, give the grandeur of the design. Otherwise, it will be pretty roundish here. Let's see if I need to remove a few things here. <coughs> All right, so that is grip from the garden, flowers <coughs> from the market and leaves from my friend's garden. So now I'm gonna take maybe about 30 seconds to move the camera to the main arrangement. And uh, so um, yeah. give me 30 seconds, please. Well, I will take this time to tell you that Ichabon International is a worldwide nonprofit organization devoted to the study and the promulgation of Japanese flower arranging, Ichabon. There are chapters in over 50 countries, 143 chapters, and a total of 7,000 in our membership, in the membership worldwide. The San Francisco Bay Area chapter is one of the largest and most active chapters outside of Japan. To find out more information about Ikebon International and the San Francisco chapter in particular, please visit our website at www.ikebana.com. Okay, so I'm back here. Can we, um, can we 
Okay, so I'm back here. I'd like to say a few, take a minute to, to talk about this last piece here. Um, we, we have in the last month or, two or so, um, we have lived in a lot of, of uh, um, not only we have the pandemic, but the heat wave and the fire. Lots of people are being affected indirectly on, or directly. And uh, thinking about, about that, I would like to create this arrangement to honor the firefighters and then to dedicate it to all those who are directly or indirectly affected by the fire in California, Oregon, and Washington. Um, I have this big piece here and I'm gonna explain it to you when I'm working on. This one represents the fire and this one represents, the big one represents hope and rejuvenation. As, so the fire here would be burning fire, but then there is hope and new life that will present it with the big arrangement. So I'm gonna start with the big arrangement first. As you know, human and nature is profoundly intertwined with in our human life. She, Mother Nature, she gave us so much food from her ground. And she gave us imaginable beauty that we are able to use it here. But at the same time, she is also very destructive. And that's what we see in the fire in California the tornado, the typhoon, and the storm in the golf course right now. But then she rejuvenates herself. She gives us hope. I'm using my material here, the green branch of peppers. It's called Palo Verde. It's probably just only grow in this area here or in the desert area. Flower, right. And you can see that, 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 that I use this as to stand to hold my material. And these are burned wood. From the ashes grows hope. White chrysanthemum. Huge white chrysanthemum. I'm very lucky to have my friends here come to help me. Some of them driving from San Francisco, some drive from Palo Alto. And we're trying to practice social distancing, be safe for everyone. So we take temperature, we wear masks. Pampers grass. grass is, the season is, uh, you can see it all driving along the freeway. This one they happen to have a bush on my property, so I love this pampers grass. And you know, that's a secret that you can keep it fluffy like this and stay fluffy and silky like this for a long time. Uh, some people use the Hair spray to spray it. But then, you know, it, it really loses the, the silkiness of it. So, what you want to keep this along, you, you use glycerin and you dilute glycerin with hot water 
and it drinks it and, and it stays to its uh, freshness form for quite a long time. Um, so I'm going to stop for this big arrangement for a minute and then work on the second one to complement it and then we can come back to this and finish it. Can we have some wire music? Wire music. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, so if you can just come here see me. Okay. So I'm going to start on the smaller one. Almond branch. If you know about the California Central Coast, it used to be dry farming. A lot of almond farmers from here until they found out that growing grapes for wine is more profitable. So that the area turned to, to be one of the one of the best grape wine in the world. As last time I I see it. So help me. <laughs> it's a little windy. I, I, I had to open this. So you have a little more wind today. And this is good because, you know, in, in here it could be pretty hot.
Three of that, let's do a two on this one. So besides the that I have here, uh, there is Chinese pistache on the market. No, I changed my mind. I don't want to use this. It's just pulling too much attention to it. So I'm going to take it, this out and put pom pom in. The flowers are huge, and I wanted to see the texture of the uh, um, the branch, the leaf. So I'm going to use pom pom, kind of lessen the effect of it. So yellow pom pom, please. Yellow pom pom. So yellow here because I have um, the sunflowers over there. So it's okay because they work as a couple here. The big one and the small one. So I, when I insert this, it will be an in and out. So it doesn't look too flat. Just add color to it with, without calling too much attention. Okay, so let's go on this side. So I post I intently leave the space because I think the Ikebana space is as important as mass. So the space here really gives you some, some tension here because you your eyes can focus on the bird wood and the space before you get a lot of mass and line up here. So my, so again, uh, this uh, arrangement is dedicated to all the five victims, friends and family, and all the five fighters who are out there fighting for us. So thank you everyone for being here and watch this program. I will take questions now. So Tan, our first question actually, uh, there's a question of where do you teach, since you now live in the uh, Paso Robles area. 
Uh, currently, I teach from this uh, uh, warehouse, right, that I'm doing my demonstration here. And I teach on Saturday morning, every Saturday morning on Zoom, 10 to 12. And it, for me, in, it's, in, it's my way to connect it with all my friends and my students. So we just meet for two hours. I will do a demonstration. Uh, students will make that their arrangements and we go through the critics and we end for most likely at in about two hours. And um, my class is, uh, I hate to say this, but uh, I wanted to teach this because uh, we wanted to share something. We all go through this together. So in a way, this is one way for me to, to get in touch with, with everyone. The class is at no charge, but I'm asking that if you feel like it, you can donate it to your favorite charity. That's all I'm asking. Uh, another question is a little more general, but um, we had a question that says, looking at um, all of the site arrangements in your work, how do you choose which school to study in? I, well, actually, I, uh, I, I study under Fisako Hairu for 30 years. Um, but every time somebody asks me uh, that they are interested in Ikebana, what do I do now? The first thing I ask is that why don't you go on the Ikebana International website and look at all the schools? You know, everybody is different some school appeals to you more. So look at all the school, read about a little bit about them and then decide what you want to do. Um, that's what I, my recommendation to you. Ikebana is a wonderful art, but each school has something slightly different from others. So it appeals to you, maybe a certain style appeal to you. And that's the best recommendation that I have. We have, oh, <laughs> we had a comment from, I hope I get this name correct, his first name, Effort Fenton, just saying, glad that you are honoring the firefighters and the first responders. Very happy to see that. So, and I will add my thanks to that also. I, I am. California is so prone to fire. This year is the worst ever that I can re remember. Yeah. But we are safe because there are people out there risking their lives for us. So thank you very much for the question. Yeah. Um, we also had a, another question, a, another more general, will there be individual pictures of all the arrangements? And I, I do have the answer to that. Yes, they will be available on our website, www.ikabana.org. There'll be individual photos as well as this whole program. And I have received from Tennessee, Hawaii, Brazil. We even have somebody watching us down in Brazil and other locations saying what a, what a wonderful demonstration you have given us. And I uh, will second that. You are an absolutely marvelous demonstrator and you've inspired us greatly. Thank you, Taylor. Oh, you know, I would thank you all of you out there. You are the reason that I'm passionate about this art. You encourage me. All my years of study, you really are out there. Every time I hear something like that, I said, I'm gonna study the rest of my life. Well, Ikebana is a lifelong study. That is for sure. Well, I want, I want to thank everyone who has tuned into this program today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if any indication of uh, all the comments that have come in so far, um, you have enjoyed this. And I am very, very glad that we were able to present this program to you. Um, if you want to see this program again, as I said earlier, it will be available on our website, www.ikabana.org. There will, at the end of this, there will be a short, very short questionnaire that we would like you to fill out 
so that it gives us an idea of how you, much you enjoyed the program, which I get a feeling you really did. And also any, any comments, questions that you may have. Um, so it would be very nice if you would fill that out. Our next program will be on October 16th. It'll be at 2 p.m. It is a virtual program again, and I hope you will mark your calendars. The program has not been set just yet of what school will be demonstrating, but uh, it will come out in our newsletter in the next week or so of who will be demonstrating and all, all the necessary information. So again, thank you very much for your uh, kind attention to this program. And I thank Tan, all the side arrangers, Ms. Iyu and Mr. Nomura for um, taking the time out of your very, very busy schedules uh, to be with us today. So until next time, and hopefully until such a time as we can actually get together in person, um, we'll see you on the 16th. Thank you.